is Russell Ted Hyder Force, an electronic sales and application engineer, to talk about the EVDR 0201A advanced training demonstration. I'm going to start by a review of the configurable control course that I did basic training for the 0201A. The first control is the EVDR 0101A, a simple one output, one input type control has one input, voltage current resistance, pulse, M, a single valve drive, so it's got one PWM output, as so 1A. 01 is the, the first two letters are the outputs, the setters are the inputs. There's an input and air monitoring, 9 to bulk, um, in range, up to as far as control output, 4, or 40 to 100 hertz, environmental P69, K, a A to D converter, and temperature range minus 4 plus 85, and CE certified. The excellent analog um, can be replacement. Uh, the reason they're digital controllers, so, so there's no pop adjust, uh, no valve time with the aging controller. So valve output intensity, program on the PC for easy replacement. I uh, can uh, valve up to two, two amps. No need for different part numbers for different current ranges. Some of the input or analog controllers would have a load of 300 to 500 milliamps or or, five or or up to two amps. This this is good for everything up to two amps. Some of the DIN type connectors that were on the analog controllers to Deutsch, uh, either create uh, coils to a Deutsch type coil, and a high force has both DIN type connector coils and, and Deutsch connector coils. So that change change out. Or if you need to make your own uh, harness, like you did in the step one there, uh, there's some part numbers from force that help you in, in doing that. Our O201A, which is the focus of this demonstration, um, uh, plugs on it just like the O101A did. Uh, two pin one side to connect to the coil, and then this one has an eight pin Deutsch on the back side face to your machine, whereas the OMA had a four pin Deutsch. Two one analog input, LED input monitoring also. Operating for 36 volts, drive two amp coil, 40 to 400 hertz. Uh, 16K, 12 bit ADD converter, side. Um, extended to ranges. The replacement for the 0201 controller that we currently have with Hydroforce and points that are updates on this controller. It's got a different in it, it's a faster processor. Uh, it's got LEDs integrated in it to be able to tell you which, which output you're driving and, and uh, as far as intense changes on how hard you're driving the output. Um, some of the additions, you know, you got output ramps, you got J19 improvements. There's on both the 0201 and the 101. Both a general purpose valve driver. The 01 has a fan drive uh, with versing function. Uh, like generator control, which um, does closed loop um, control. Available still working on, on that now. And then the 0101A has a, uh, a transmission valve control. HFM is as as the program we're going to use to set up this controller. Available charge through our electronic portal, and you're going to USB to CAN converter, either a Kvasser or Peak System. Another show us some of the different um, screens, but we're going to explore this in, in great detail in a second. And the kit, uh, basically a controller in a box. It has all the cables you need. It has the USB to CAN uh, converter you need. You need under one part number, and there is a cost. This mail, electronics.support at hydroforce.com. Uh, general information at just hydroforce.com. Portal has a specific information. So the uh, website, services and support, and electronics portal. And uh, another demo that we're going to do to demonstrate the uh, the key functionality of this controller. And I'm this, just like the basic presentation, the startup guides for both the 0201 and the 101A, on 
um, setting a controller and what type of screens you need to look at and and uh, basic general setup procedures. Okay. I'm going to bring on a couple things. The first hole takes the start. I want to bring it up here. So I have pulse. I'm programming calculator, just a standard Windows calculator in, in programming mode. And I'm also going to bring my USB to CAN um, um, uh, converter to tell us what's going on with our controller. We, we uh, turn to HIF impulse. This is the initial screen. I'll go to tab and do a start, just like we did the uh, basic explanation. Tell the adapter I'm using, tell the baud rate I'm communicating at, what stuff I have. You know, it's found a 34, so it populates this when I hit the select button. Download any firmware. In other words, change your valve driver to a fan driver or, yeah, or a generator control. You would do that through this function here. Program that I've been working on for the J90 cation. This is going to alert to the, the um, presentation or the discussion we just had. <clears throat> Zero to five volts. I've it open right, right now, so I, you know, we can we can volts and zero volts, but I'm leaving it at five volts. If you need, you would enter it there. Scans. I am now at an input in 1939 as opposed. To, uh, the input we had before, or the external settings, and once that by doing the pull down external input, <clears throat> leave it at J99. This is, this would be a 10 bit signal, so 0 to 1023 is the signal in for this J1939 message. And again, at the at the bull, not digital the input, but uh, you know, I'm going to drive a PWM output. So I'm driving both of these coils at the same time, but they have different ramp, ramp rates or different rates. We're at three breakpoints. This one only has one. one. And what's compatible? Output at 200 hertz because I'm using the same coils and valves I did in the, the previous station. Um, depending on what you want to drive, you know, the, the, the mixture's data will tell you where the ideal frequency needs to be for that. Valve and once controllers, the 0101A and the 0201A would drive anything from 40 hertz to 400 hertz. Team settings. I'm going to transmit my information analog input on 6450 every 100 millisecond. I'm going to command messages for coil A on 61440 and receive B messages on 61441. Going to start bit one, so byte one. Bit one, the length long as far as 10, 10 bits, and I'll look for that um, um, for the one second that I'll set a fault. Same screen as we saw before. The controller, download, then log on. We know in, in the presentation before, before our input was driving valves. But it is no thing. It's just it's transmitting a message. So this would be for like a pressure transducer that is sitting the J1939 bus. If he can view information, we notice that there are um, to this software, either a receive section or a transmit section. Now, or that we are our trans information on 61450. This information, this information here is, is hexadecimal. So I need to convert it from decimal to hexadecimal. Calculator, programming calculator. If I can, 61, and can X, it value of F00A. If we look up here, 0A22 is the uh, piece of information that is being transmitted from the controller. J1939 address of the EVDR is 34. If I can 4 in 22. So this message F0A22 is on the 
um, the, the um, analog input. So if I monitor around, we can see that the bytes one and byte two get moved. So byte, high byte. So if I can hexadecimal zero C two nine the decimal, it's three. These, this is in millivolts, so 713 millivolts or 3.11 volts. So it's two core blade. Other transmitted is, is um, coil current of A, coil current of B, and power supply. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn on messages for the outputs. The outputs are 61440. So back to my calculator, 6140. N is F000. So F021 is just a uh, source address I gave uh, for my computer. So I will transmit information every 100 milliseconds uh, to the controller IC602 and then a CD. And those are in hex. If I turn on my messaging, both Command A and Command B, we can see I drive in outputs on the coil. 800 milliseconds. Million. If we go to the command at 800 million, 512, we should have 100 million. My command to A to be 5, once again, we need to go from decimal to hexadecimal. Function of this PCAN view, it it shows things in hexadecimal. Some of the, the products show things in uh, decimal out there. So if I 200, so H and zero zero. Remember low byte, high byte. So zero two hit OK. Okay. Zero two hundred. The decimal done something wrong. Decimal five twelve. Hmm. I have something wrong here. Zero two hundred. What was the or two six hundred milliamps? Now that, that is right. I'm sorry. Sorry. Will give us a current of six hundred milliamps, which is what we need. Sorry, I was confused for a second. Okay. So since we don't have the giant messages being transmitted, just like, like in the uh, basic presentation we talked about, there's a way to manually give a value to the coils. And the same thing here. Once our 1939 messages, so I've got the ability to turn on one um, uh, main for each coil A and Coil B. So this is how you can having uh, your controller configured, or if you just need to do a uh, test bench setup. Dating, upper right hand corner, charting. I'll export the chart to that right there. I will file using Excel. We can see the time on my computer is 118. So 18 values for my A coil current, my B coil current, and my signal, my uh, signal that I my analog input. So this is advanced way to get the O201A to be driven by J1939 commands um, and submit the value of the analog input onto the J39 bus. Next idea for having a distributed control where you've got a controller that's sitting on a valve manifold somewhere in the machine. It can very easily have uh, a small iron harness coming from that valve manifold back to your master for controller. I want to conclude um, by reminding you of the devices that we have in configurable control, both 101A and O201A. We know that in different uh, configurations or different derivatives. Um, the different course, the O101A has one PWM output and one analog input. 
no CAN chip. The A has two P inputs and one analog input. Any please feel free to email us at electronics.support at com.